Hello, everybody. Today, we're going to have some bridge tips on hand evaluation. Well, what do we mean by that? There's a lot of good things about learning how to evaluate your hand properly. Too many of us don't use the tools that are needed to get an accurate count or decision on what we should do with our hands. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. All right, high card points don't always tell the whole story of a bridge hand. Some hands hold the same number of high card points but are not worth the same at all. Some 10 point hands are worth more than 13 point hands and some 13 point hands seem to be worth 11. How can this be? When you're evaluating the true value of a hand, we need to look at high card points and things that I call assets and defects. Assets make your hand more valuable than the high card points suggests, and defects make your hand less valuable than the high card points suggest. When evaluating your hand's true worth, we sometimes also look at our shape. A flat hand, what we use is four triple three, we hear that a lot, is a defect. It's not as powerful as a two-suited hand. Two-suited hand is an asset. Let's take a look at the first example I have here. Queen, Jack, four, ace, queen, seven, queen, six, five, two, Jack, five, two. Okay, well, this hand has 12 high card points. So a lot of people today feel that you should open all 12 point hands but it has several defects. What are the defects? Well, number one, the shape is bad. It's four triple three, all right? That means you have no long suit to establish. You have no short suits to rough if a fit is found. And you only have one, what we call quick trick. We have one quick trick, an ace. Your hand is quacky, lots of queens and jacks. Look at all these queens and jacks. Hmm. And if you use loser trick count, which is popular today, you have eight losers. An opening hand should have seven. We're not going to talk about or learn loser trick count today, but for those that know it, just remember a seven loser hand is an opening hand. An eight loser hand is not. And this has eight losers. Okay, let's look at these two hands. Which one is worth more? Well, hand A has only 12 high card points, but is worth a lot more than hand B with 13 high card points. Why is that? Well, look at the shape. Hand A has five, five come alive, two five card suits. That's good for trick taking. Not necessarily a no trump, but in a suit contract, it's worth a lot more than this flat hand that uh, B is. It has a side suit. What does that mean? If you and your partner have found a fit, then the other suit, the other long suit is good for setting up to, to get rid of lots of losers, right? And also in hand A, it has a singleton. So it's got lots of things working for it. It's got lots of quick tricks, two aces and good combination middle cards in the two suits, a singleton. So five, five, a singleton and controls is pretty good. We like that hand a lot. Hand B has again, quacky hands, lots of queens and jacks. Those are not good cards. And also it contains what I call and others call a dubious doubleton, dubious. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, it's not necessarily worth much, is it? You have jack x of diamonds. How much is this really worth as a doubleton? Other dubious doubletons are jack x, queen x, king jack, and queen jack. Those are all dubious doubletons. They're only good if you have a fit with partner, but on their own, they don't you know, carry full weight. It's not exactly four points, this king jack, and not exactly three the queen jack if it's all by itself. Those are defects. Dubious singletons, those are a stiff king, a stiff jack, a stiff queen. Defects are bad, assets are good. 
other things that we don't evaluate properly are when we say underrated cards that I have here, aces and tens. Those are assets. They always say aces are only worth four. I think they're worth a little bit more, like four and a quarter. I don't think so much of queens and jacks. Those are defects to me, okay? Aces and tens are underrated. And high spot cards are underrated. And those are assets. What are high card spots? Tens and nines and eights. If you're rich in high card spots, you can upgrade your hand. And the most important thing is when a fit is found, then for sure you can upgrade when you have good controls. Good controls are aces and kings. And then sometimes if your partner has bid a suit, your singleton king in that suit isn't so bad anymore. Let's take a look what we're talking about. Okay. How many of you play the rule of 20 when trying to decide whether or not to open a hand? What's the rule of 20? You add your high card points to the total of your two longest suits. So if you had 10 high card points and five of one suit and four of another, that would make nine of the two longest suit and 10, that would not meet the rule of 20. That would only be 19. But here, as we can see, let's see, we have how many high card points in A? We have three, five, six, eight, nine, 10 high card points. And we have two five card suits. So 10 plus 10 is 20. However, however, the rule of 20, we did add our high card points to the total of our two longest suits like an A and we come up with 20, but I would not open this hand. Why? Because my high card points are scattered. They're not all in my two suits. I have a dubious doubleton and a dubious singleton. Hmm. All right, well, let's look at hand B. Hand B has how many high card points? 10 high card points and five cards in spades and diamonds. That's 10, that equals 20. Would I open this hand? Yes, because my high card points are in my suits. They're not scattered values. So I would definitely open hand B, but I would not open hand A. Many people would because they feel, well, they got their rule of 20. I think you should be a little bit more careful when you're deciding what to open. When you have a fit, let's say if your partner opens a diamond and you will have a singleton king, now your king has its full value when you found a fit. But downgrade when you've got all these dubious doubletons and singletons and your points are so scattered. So even though there's the rule of 20, use it more wisely. Okay, let's take a look at an example. What would you open with this hand? Well, this hand has 14 high card points, right? But look at all the tens and nines. It doesn't have any card in it that's lower than an eight. Well, a lot of you always wonder how come so many people open what they call 14 plus hands, one no trump. This is a 14 plus hand. It doesn't have a five card suit, but my goodness, you could upgrade. Look at all of this. I would upgrade and I would open one no. And let's see what happens if you do. Your partner is going to bid three no. They have a 10 count. So they're going to raise you and you have 14 opposite 10 and you're going to get to game. And as you can see, it's a very good game. You have several lines of play to make it. West will probably lead their fourth best heart. You've got a double stopper in hearts and they can't hurt you. You've got four club tricks and two hearts, no matter what is six. And you can set up the diamonds for extra tricks or you can take a finesse to the spade. What is a finesse? Well, we always think of it as an ace queen. But here in this example, if you lead a small spade towards the queen, 
That's also finesse. You're hoping that the king is on your left. You could double finesse. You have the 10 and you could lose to the jack or you could try to play a spade to your 10. You, know, you have all sorts of different kind of finesses in the spade suit. So that's going to produce extra tricks if you get it right. Might only produce one extra trick or two if you guess what to do. But all in all, this hand is worth the 15 points that I promised when I opened one no trump, even though it only has 14. Okay, but here that's a friendly hand. The diamonds are 3-3. Three, three, and you are going to make nine or 10 tricks most likely. So here's an example where your spot cards are very important. You're rich in spot cards, rich in tens. I like this hand and I would open it one no. Okay, second example. How many of you play uh, something for the majors over no trump? A lot of us do. We have different bids. This particular auction, it went one no trump by West and here's you, your South and your partner bid two diamonds for the majors and the enemy East partner of the one no bidder bid two no trump, which I have here as an alert and many of you might not know this bid. It's called Liebensau. It's a very useful bid and it, I think we should have a lesson on it and it's used often. And what they're doing is they're not bidding two no natural, okay? They are bidding two no as a relay to three clubs, as you can see here, which means they could have any sort of hand. They could have a bad hand where they wanna get out to play three clubs, or they could have a bad hand where they wanted to play three diamonds. This bid is used for many different reasons, but we don't really need to know that yet in order for us to make our appropriate bid. So it doesn't matter what they decided the two no means. It only matters what our partner is trying to show us. And that's something that we forget. Our partner is the most important part of our team, okay? So let's see what happens here. Again, the auction went one no, two diamonds for the majors, and they bid two no, which was alerted. And we don't know what they have yet. And at this moment, you're going to pass. You don't have anything wonderful to say. West bid three clubs, which was forced in their system by the two no. And now your partner bid three hearts. And it went past and now it's your bid. Okay, so here your partner showed the majors and you have three spades and you have two hearts. So you are most likely just going to bid three spades, right? You're going to correct. Your partner probably has at least five spades for this. And as a matter of fact, when they come in and they bid three hearts, this is showing something extra, okay? They have a good hand. You didn't take a call and they're bidding again. All right, and they should be telling you something. Can anybody imagine what they're telling you besides the fact that they have a good hand? All right, and did you all decide just to bid three spades? Well, I'm gonna tell you that I'm not gonna bid three spades. I'm gonna bid four spades, okay? Why am I gonna bid four spades? Because all my points, I only have six points, but all my points are in my partner's suits. They're in the majors. And when my partner chose to bid three hearts, they are saying, normally this says either I have extras or I have longer hearts than spades. All right, and they have like almost a game forcing hand. Not quite, but look at their hand, it's pretty good. And look at my cards. So this isn't a six point hand any longer. So if your partner is six five, they can only have one one in, in the minors or two in one minor and nothing in one of the other minors. In this particular case, they have singleton singleton, but they could be void in one of the minors. 
who cares what my minor suit cards are? My partner doesn't have too many of those. But look how golden my six point hand is. So here's an example of so many people would not even think of bidding and raising to gain. But it's 100% clear that after my partner made their three heart call, okay, I'm going to bid gain. My partner's not going to expect such golden cards for me, but I know I have them because I've listened and I heard my partner show me their hand and I'm going to be a good partner and evaluate my hand appropriately and I'm going to bid game and I'm going to get rewarded because I came here to this lesson to learn about hand evaluation. All right, let's take another one. It's gone one club by you. This is you now. They overcalled a diamond and partner, your favorite partner bid a spade. Okay. Now, what do you want to do with this hand? How many high card points is it? Four, eight, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It's only 16 and my partner only showed me six. But is it 16? Are we evaluating our hands? I'm rich in controls. Look at, I got three aces. Aces and kings are good controls. And I have all of these what? What do I call these? I've got lots of high middle spot cards. Lots of tens and nines. Look at this. And I have a singleton in the enemy suit. So I'm going to upgrade this hand and I'm not going to just bid three spades, which normal, normally that's what most people would do with their 15 to 17. I'm going to say that this is worth gain, even opposite my partner's six count. Let's see how I did. Voila. We have a really good hand here and we're going to make gain. I liked my hand. I hope you would like this hand too. Anyway, I think it's fun to try and evaluate your hand properly and learn about how important these middle spot cards are and what good controls are. This jack isn't worth a point. It's not worth anything other than it's worth extras because it's a singleton, okay? And you have a fit with partner. When you have a fit with partner, that's when you can count extra points for your singletons, but not until then. And our hand grew pretty big here after my partner bid a spade. Okay, I got us to game and we can make it. And I hope you'll get to all your games. If you have any questions or requests for a topic, please feel free to email me. And as always, I'll see you at the bridge table. And I look forward to it. Have a good bridge day.